why pop music is bad. Now wait, before you go into the comment section to say something like, oh my gosh, you're so bad. Music is purely subjective. I'm unsubscribing and disliking all your videos. Wait, let me prefix this by saying not all pop music is bad. And in no way am I trying to disrespect the people who wrote the songs or the music. This is just why I think that our generation of pop music is lacking compared to other ones. Let's go ahead and get started with number one, music theory. I'm sure you saw this one coming since this is a music channel, but what we're gonna look at specifically is the four chord progression. Now, let's back up a second. What is a four chord progression? Well, I think it's best explained on the piano. Let's go ahead and take a look at it over there. Here we are at our piano, and the four chord progression consists of chords built on the one, four, five and six the one chord which consists of these three notes here think of this as the home bass when you hear it in the music you'll feel completely at rest just like you do at home that's how the one chord works within the music and it's usually at the beginning or the end of a song to signify rest and a finish all right our second chord here is the four chord i like to think about this one as being the porch of the music. Think about the porch as like, not completely away from home. There's still a good amount of rest, but it's not as comfy as being inside the house like it is on the one chord. And that's the exact same way it works in music. Feel a bit of tension, but not that much. In contrast to our next one, the five chord. The five chord consists of these three notes running with the analogy of one chord being the house, four chord being the porch, the five chord is all the way across the country. Um, you could think about if you were across the country, you'd really want to go back to your house, right? And it's the exact same way in the song. It, it's the pull of wanting to go back to the one chord. And then we have one more chord in our four chord progression, and that is this right over here, the six chord just of these three notes here. Uh, let's just go with our analogy again. So if you're at all the way across the country on your five chord, remember, uh, when you get on a plane and you're expecting to go home, imagine the plane lands somewhere completely different. That's how the six chord works. This four and five set you up to want to go back home. And the six chord puts you somewhere else. So you're expecting to go back to your one chord but in reality, you end up somewhere different. Exact same way it is when you listen to it in the music. It creates this pull and that you're not expecting with the six chord. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and take it a look. Now that we know what a four chord progression is, this is a list of the top five Billboard songs of the year for 2018. You can see 10 of the songs use a four chords throughout the entire song. Close behind is three chords with eight and five chords with eight. And it slowly dwindles off from there. So the majority of these songs are only using four chords. When there's tons more that they could be getting access to. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and move on to our second point. Number two, the lyrics. All right, I have a quick question for you. What? is the point of lyrics. No, like, really, what is the point of lyrics? I would say most people would agree that lyrics are there to make the writer experience what you, the listener, is supposed to feel. But what happens when the lyrics don't accomplish that? Go with me for a second to take a look at a old song, not too old, uh, by Harry Styles called Watermelon Sugar. I'm sure you've heard of it has 600 million uh, streams as of August, 2020. Here are the lyrics. Watermelon sugar high, watermelon sugar high, watermelon sugar high, watermelon sugar high, watermelon, I think, I think you get the idea. This is very, very repetitive for the main chorus, right? So the question is with that definition of what we gave for lyrics to be earlier, 
what does the writer want you to feel when you listen to this? What is Watermelon Sugar High supposed to make you the listener experience that he was experiencing at the same time? That's one of the other big problems with pop music these days, is the lyrics are confused on what they want to be. They expect to be something, but yet us, the listeners, aren't getting that same emotional reaction out of it that we should be getting out of the music. So, if you've been on any other theory video before, you've probably heard these two points. Now we're going to talk about a third thing, one that I've heard almost nobody talk about before. This is what I think one of the biggest reasons the music industry is not what it could be today. That, number three, clout. That's right. Um, let's go back to some, the earlier point of what music is supposed to be. It's supposed to make us feel something. It's supposed to make us connect to the writer of what they were experiencing emotionally at the time. Make us feel it and listen to it. But that's sadly not what music has become. Music now is about getting famous, getting money off of it. And these people, they're not putting in what their number one focus should be. They're just making stuff that could be a lot better. But a question arises. What, what is the point? Does it matter that this pop music isn't as good as it could be? Does it have to be so good? Tons of people out there enjoy this music just fine, even though it's not as perfect as it could be. I've heard plenty of people who love this pop music, even though they know that there's only four chords and that the lyrics repeat themselves eight times in the chorus, right? So does it matter? Here's my take on it. With the pop music, you have, think about it like this. Imagine a toolbox, right? You only know how to use a hammer in that toolbox. Uh, you can do a fair bit of stuff with a hammer, but when it comes to building a house or building a car, you're not gonna get very far with that hammer. It, it's the exact same thing for the music theory. I'm sure you can see how it connects. The hammer is just the four chords. They know how to use this, but there's so many other tools in there they could be taking advantage of to create some beautiful works of art like a house or a moving piece of music exact same thing with the lyrics they just repeat the same three lines over and over over again it's just like using the hammer to try and build a house you're not going to get very far so here's what i think if these pop musicians could figure out how to use their entire toolbox to their advantage instead of just using the hammer, and they already get 600 million listens. Imagine how much more impactful the music could be to this generation if they figured out how to use the entire toolbox. I wanna to leave you with this final thought. It comes from Danny of the band Love Handle. Music has the power to change your life forever. I think that's what our generation really needs right now. All right, um, well, thank you guys for watching this video. I know it's a bit different than what I usually do. Let me know what you think of it. Um, remember, just try and keep it uh, civil in the comments, even if this isn't exactly what, what you agree with, some of the issues I've noticed. All right, um, thanks for watching to the end. I'll see ya.